Hi, in this XML schema hands-on presentation, we will learn how to build complex types using the various elements offered in the XML schema namespace. We will be creating a patient schema that will be a blueprint to hold patient information. So any hospital management software can exchange patient information with another hospital management application in XML format and they can validate the patient information or the patient XML against this schema. The goal is to build a schema that will hold patient information which has the basic patient details like ID, name, age, date of birth along with the patient address and payment information. As you know by now, every XML schema document starts with the schema as its root element within which we define all our simple and complex types to define our first complex type, which is the patient, we do that using the XST complex type element declaration and the name of it is patient. To define our patient XML elements, we use XSD sequence. The XSD sequence in the XML schema namespace mandates that whatever elements we declare within this occur in the same order as we provide here. What that means is when a patient element is created in an XML document, like what we have here, the elements, what we define here should occur exactly in the same order. As you can see, this is the order in which the element should occur. To see it in action, let's open our XML document, the patient.xml in XML notepad. Right now our patient XML is a valid one because we don't see any validation errors. If I go back and if I change the order of any one of these elements, let's say I'll uh, move the email after gender. If I go back to XML notepad, it will reload the XML and it immediately validates our XML against the XST and says that it, it is expecting child element email but it is seeing a gender so if I put this back in the same exact order as it was earlier the validation error goes away so the XSD sequence mandates the order of the elements in a XML schema now to add address to our patient information we, are, we define another complex type called address and we then refer to that address within the patient complex type. So we can refer complex types from within another complex type. And this address, instead of using a sequence, it uses all. The access the all element lets the elements within it appear once in the XML, but in any order. So all the elements within this XSD all should appear at least once in, a, in the XML document, but the order doesn't matter. To see that in action in our patient.xml, when we define the address, as you can see, the zip code comes first, even though it's declared as the third element in the schema file. Another complex type we define is the payment information, the patient's payment information, whether he's going to use an insurance or cash. And we use the XSD choice, which is an, again another element within the XML schema. And choice allows to have one of these elements here. We need not have both the insurance as well as cash. It, choice allows us to have one of these elements. And when we define our patient XML, as you can see, we only have cash here. Instead, we can also have insurance. So, so far you have learned three different XML schema elements that we can use to define complex types. Now we will see how to control the element occurrences using the min occurs and max occurs attributes. So using the min occurs and max occurs, you can tell the validator how many times a particular element can occur within the XML document. For example, here we are saying that the ID element should at least occur once. By default, 
when you don't specify a min occur or man max occurs attribute by default that means uh, element should occur at least once but if you specify min occurs zero it's an optional element and if you specify min occurs one it should at least occur once and you can also use the max occurs element and you can specify the number exact number of how many times that element can occur the maximum so if we go back to the XML here and if I try to add another ID element you should see a validation error because the ID is allowed only once if you want to have unlimited number of elements you can use the unbounded literal to specify that that means you can have infinite number of address elements within a patient to summarize from this presentation you have learned how to define complex types which are very similar to your classes if you are coming from an object oriented background it's like defining your classes and each class can use other classes or depend on other classes if you are coming from a database background they are just like defining your tables you have also learned how to control the number of XML element occurrences by using the min occurs and max occurs attribute attributes until the next presentation keep learning and sharing thanks for watching